from all over the shoe man and who you saw this morning was andy my dog andy come here boy get out here yes say hi he helps me around the shop he, he gives me actually sometimes he likes to work on shoes but most of the time he's just here to love on me and for me to love on him and to help me with customers too he actually goes and greets the customers before i can get to them ain't that right i know all right so today we're going to be working on a pretty cool pair of boots there is yep the purple with the brown bottom it says old west i don't know if you can see that old west um but as you can see they've seen some better days they have some they've been worn and loved a lot and so what we're going to do today is obviously resole them clean and condition the leather uppers originally it was just supposed to be new soles and heels but as i'm looking at it more you can see that plastic welt right there you see it's cracked right there and right there so when i go to take this sole off this welt is going to be no good anymore the welt is the piece that you can see the stitching on most boots so that gets hand stitched to the boot and then you put the sole on and you stitch the boot to the welt or the sole to the welt so it's all stitched together and this heel base i'm gonna have to replace this piece because You'll see when I go to take it off, it's just going to start crumbling and it's not going to be any good anymore. But we're going to upgrade these boots from a plastic welt to a leather welt and from a paper cardboard heel base to a leather stacked heel base. Um, after we do all that, these boots will be ready for another God knows how many miles. Um, but let's get started by taking these off the heels the soles the welt and then we will start yeah we'll go from there these longer boots are really hard to get on the last but you get them right they'll go on um so i didn't mention before but we're going to do black 700 vibram soles that's what it's called it's got a v tread and it. it's super durable better than what the manufacturer had on there um but yeah so i'll start I'm not going to take off the heel, the top lift. The top lift is the piece that you walk on, um, on the heel. But you're going to see, I'm going to take this off using a heel prior. And basically what you want to do is get underneath the heel block and pry it up. And you can see half the heel block stayed on the shoe and we got the, that off that's nailed on the heel block is hold, held on by nails coming in from the inside up these are threaded nails um, but yeah as you can see this, this base is no good no more it's, it's trash so I'm going to clip these nails off Then with the razor blade, I'm going to cut all these stitching. You can see right here, he kind of wore through it, so I don't really need to worry about that. But everywhere that, where the thread is still holding on, I got to cut it and break it loose. Then, where is my tool? I always lose my tools. Well, I don't lose them. I misplace them. I can't find them. Now I find them because they're on my table. They're just buried by a whole bunch of other things. So then I'm going to take this and just kind of pick at the side of the sole and pull it up.
All right, now we have the inside of the boot. We have the sole off. This is like a foam filler that they use to fill in a cavity. We're gonna be replacing that with a fork. Um, I'm gonna take these nails out here in the back. Okay, so we have our steel shank here, which supports your foot from, or along the gap. So you have, normally you'd have the heel here, and then you have that large gap right here before your sole hits the floor. So this goes in between it and helps support your foot. That way it's not, that way it's not, that way it's, it is not supported, or that way it is supported and the boot is more comfortable. Now these threaded nails, I gotta take them out, but I can't pull them out this way because I got those heads on them. So I gotta hit them out through the bottom, but before we do that, I have to take the heel the sock liner out. You see that piece of leather there in the back? You take that out. Oh, this one's a full length one. All right, so I'm just gonna take the back part off. And now you can see that black piece isn't there and you kind of see those nails, the head of the nails sh shining through. Now I'm gonna take a hammer and instead of, I gotta push to the edge of the last and feel the last, you gotta move over a little bit more. one side and then can you see them so I gotta go in with another pair of pinchers pliers whatever you want to call these and grab the nail and you can see there it is man when I first started doing this fixing shoes I would sit here sometimes for like 15 20 minutes trying to find and get a hold of the nail so I can pull it out. I'm gonna try something so I don't have to put on the last. Sometimes this works. Maybe I can win. The threaded nails, they're called threaded nails because they have what's called, I guess you'd call them the threads. And when they go in, just like a screw has the thread they don't want to come back. Yet. See, the welt is this separate piece that goes all the way around here. This is what is considered a 270 degree welt. Because it only goes from one ankle bone to the other ankle bone. If it was a 360 degree welt, it would go from here all the way around, continue around the back part of the heel, and meet right here. Most cowboy boots are built this way. Um, so we're going to continue to do that. So usually, if you're lucky, you can get the welt, you can just pull the welt right off. Because it's held on with a chain stitch. Some threads get caught. Oh yeah, that's, see that's where that crack was. Aha, and there you go. Do you have that welt? And you can see where it was cracked, it just came undone. There was no way I was gonna put new soles on that. All right, now we have another problem. This is coming undone from the footbed. So, 
the way manufacturers create or build their boots so you have your footbed which the footbed is what you're walking on and then you have a separate canvas piece that gets glued down to the footbed and that is called the gemming and then from that gemming you can then sew on the welt to the uppers so this piece right here is that fabric piece it goes just like just like the the welt it goes from here all the way around and it gets glued to the footbed and then all three pieces get stitched together with the welt so before we go to stitch this stitch a new welt on we got to glue this back okay so we've glued the gaming back down as you can tell it's actually there's a small piece that are kind of just coming up right here but after I get the welt stitched on I'll glue it down um, I added this piece this is a thin fabric material it's like um, it's what airbags are made from so we take old airbags and use it to support sometimes inside the middle of the shoe but when sewing the welt on it goes through that piece and then it will help prevents the gemming on the, near this area from coming unglued anymore and even if it does come unglued the sewing will actually hold it into place but I'm sewing the welt on I've dyed it black already because we got brown boot black well um, I added just a little bit of color to the uppers you can tell because that's what it used to look like I just cleaned it off with some thinner and then I added some colored shoe cream similar to what it was and then that gave me what we have now so we're stitching on the welt this is a leather welt this is not a plastic welt like what the manufacturer put on this over time will not crack as long as you condition it just like your skin you want to put moisturizers on your skin so they don't crack leather is the same thing you don't want your leather boots or leather products to crack, so you got to put lotion and creams on it every now and then so it doesn't dry out. But what we're doing is fairly simple. You see those holes? We are just following those holes. So I got to, you line up the hole with the needle and the new welt. You poke the hole into the welt and then. You go into that hole and it comes out the other side. Hold on. So you have it all the way through the welt, the leather uppers, the lining on the inside of the boot, and the gimming. And then you take this thread, make a loop. On this needle, it has a hook. You hoop it onto the hook and pull it through. Now you got a loop on this side. Then you take this thread, you go inside there, and then you pull this through, and then you have to make sure that the knot, is, it's gonna end up like this. You wanna make sure that is in the middle, because if it's off to one side or the other, it's not gonna be tight. And then you just pull tight. You go on to the next one. Loop it, pull it through, pull the other thread through the loop, pull back, and pull tight. We got that steel shank in there. I wrapped it in the same material I used to bridge the two pieces together, simply because when you go to put the new sole on, I don't want it to squeak. So it's just an anti-squeaking fabric, I guess, for now. So I'm going to put the first layer of cork in there. This is that filler material that we took out. But they use like a foam. We're using cork, which is a lot better quality.
rip off the edges real quick before I go put the second layer on. Which is here. Ah, grabbed the wrong side, but there we go. Second layer going in because it's so thick. Not not thick. The cavity is so deep you need two layers. Because the cork is so thin. Now I'm just gonna hammer this into place. And once we sand this off, it looks like this. And we are ready to get some glue on the bottom for the soles. We are ready to put the sole onto the shoe. Uh, got two coats of glue on the shoe. A couple coats on here, and then we're gonna try to get this design centered as best as possible. Mainly I'm just trying to get the Vibram logo in the center because the rest is kind of self-centering because it's just lines going back back and forth. So all right. Now that I got it hammered on, I'm gonna take it to my five and one and press the weld down. There we go, see? I pressed it down. We've got plenty, plenty of room in the back to make sure that we have that nice lip that the boot originally had. Got it all trimmed up and ready to stitch. Now I don't want to do the final stitch, the final sanding at this point, because when I go to stitch this, the rubber is going to come out just a little bit because of the thread and the needles that go through it. So we got our top and bottom thread, we just gotta make sure there's some lubricant on there because the thread will break if you don't do that. We got our top thread. And so because it's a 270 degree welt, we're only gonna stitch it from here to here, going all the way around. We don't need to go through the back. So let's go ahead and do this. Sometimes, red does not like the first stitch so I gotta mess around with it a little bit get it all set into place and then we are good to go finish but I ran out of bobbin thread so I got to refill it and then finish the stitch but so far as looking pretty good I just gotta see and you can see here I don't know if you can get it to focus it's kind of has that lip there so that thread actually pushes the rubber out a little bit so I'm going to re fill this bobbin and then continue to stitch it. Whoa! Alright, so it's been about two and a half, almost three weeks since we've last spoken. I wanted to get this done before, was it Christmas? Yeah, before Christmas. I was going to get it done. As you saw on the previous clip, the phone tumbled and then hit perfectly on the corner of my sewing machine, cracked the screen, and half of the screen went black. So I was like, all right, calm down. I saw something in my face there. Yeah, calm down, chill out, we'll get it fixed, come back to it. So it's been about two weeks and 
here we are. We got the soles stitched on. Let me get a better light for you. There we go. Soles are stitched on. The back is nailed on. We have to nail the back because since there's no thread holding it down, we that holds it to it. And when the nails go in, they hit the metal last and they kind of like crimp. And so you don't feel it on the inside of the boot. But the stitch turned out pretty good. I like it. Next thing we gotta do is build up our heel base, put our new rubber top lift on, do our final cleaning and conditioning, and she is ready to go. As you can see, we got our heel base built up, and you might say it's a lot smaller than what this had, but that reason is because the matching heel to these style soles is that, but it's that thick. So I have to shorten the heel block to accommodate that thick a sole. Now they do have leather stacked heel bases in this shape, but I don't do them very often. So all I had was this. So I glued this on, trimmed it, and then I shaped it. And then when I go to put this on, we will make that, that little angle in the back of the heel. You can see it's pretty thick and that this one is curved. I straightened it. I'm just gotta line up this front piece. Now don't worry, I know it's not all the way to the back. This will be at an angle, so I wouldn't really even tell. Alright. And now so that's hammered on. All the holes that we're putting the nails in, they have washers that are built into the heel. So when you sink the nail in, it grabs hold of that washer and just pushes it to the, the heel base, giving it a very secure hold. And now, we're just gonna sand and clean up that edge, tilt it down a little bit, give it that curve, very similar to that. Alrighty, I'm done with this project, this restoration, this boot, and you know, I'm pretty happy with it. The uppers, they didn't, I didn't spend too much time on them, so they look kinda dirty. That's just from the conditioners. What that's the conditioner kind of wets the leather, and once it dries, it'll fade back to what it was. But there we go. New Vibram 700 soles with the matching heels. Now, I only did the one for now. That's what the other one still looks like. I haven't touched it yet, but it's a good before and after. Now as you can tell, this has a very a lot more aggressive angle than this one. A couple reasons I did that. One, you could see I'm right there at the holes right there. So any further slanted, I would have, I would have sanded right into the holes. And second, this gives him a wider base to walk on. It'll be more comfortable and he'll get more wear out of this heel than he did this one. So that's why I didn't do it that aggressive. And yeah, I love how the stitching came out. I love the white stitching on the black welt. This is so beautiful. As you remember, we replaced that welt because this plastic welt that was on the original had a crack in it that I couldn't restitch a new sole on without replacing it. So we did end up doing more work, but in the long run, this boot will last a lot longer than what it originally had on. And it looks even better in my opinion. So thank you guys for joining me. Andy, come here. Andy, give me, give it. Oh yeah.
Yes. 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 Say bye. Say bye to everybody. Oh, you just want love. Yep. Well, thanks for watching, y'all. Y'all have a good day. And God bless.